questions. So guys, without further ado, you've seen her on Gotham, you've seen her on Doctor Who, she's here for you right now. Please welcome Michelle Gomez! Welcome, yes, let's just do this. This is gonna be nice. We'll just do the whole thing. So, let's just Hi. talk about boys. Hi. <laughs> Alright, that's enough. Welcome. Pleasure to have you here in Ottawa. So good to be here. I'm so happy to be in Ottawa. Is this your first time in Ottawa? It is. It's yeah. my first time in Canada. Really? Might as well fly to the capital for it. Yeah, I'm glad to have done that very much because walking would have taken a while. <laughs> Even from the airport, uh, this morning there's been some issues with that and like, we're gonna get here from the airport, great, which is next door, essentially. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, so we're at the airport, we'll be there in about four hours because that's what traffic was like getting in here. This what is that? Time. Is that the tulip? Is there a tulip problem? There's a tulip it's festival as well. Yeah, festival. that's loaded with uh, buses that just come in to take pictures of tulips. They're beautiful. They are. Especially the double very nice. ones. Very uh, nice. But if you live here, you're like, oh, tulips again. <laughs> you can't get around in downtown. Damn Amsterdam. It's going to be great. <laughs> All right, well, welcome. I'm sure these people want to ask me quite a few questions. So I guess we're going to get started. This lady dressed as a TARDIS oh. was the first one to jump up to a microphone for you. Hi. Um, my question is, so you are the female incarnation of the master so what parts of the character did you pull from your own ideas and what did you pull from the previous master's influence and um, okay uh, I don't actually ever seem to have any original thought and um, so yeah, thankfully I have Stephen Moffat for that uh, who's an incredible genius and um, he really is a genius, by the way. And um, so he, I basically just turn up, I put that costume on, I don't have to do anything other than that. And then I say my lines and then I go. <laughs> and with regards to what I pulled from previous uh, masters, um, I um, did, did not want to get intimidated by other people's choices or other people's um, magnificence. Uh, because it wasn't lost on me, like the, this task at hand to be to become the first female master. So um, that was enough for me. I didn't want to sort of take on anything that anybody had done before, and uh, I really just wanted to turn up, just not bump into the furniture, and get off <laughs> as quickly as possible. Thank you. No, thank you. I'm jump over to the left side here, yes, sir. Hi, I uh, just wanted to say a huge fan of the show. Oh, you're over there, because that's yeah. a woman yeah, so there. We're jumping, we're jumping back. <laughs> With a very male voice, so I'm going to look over yeah. here now to the man. Yeah, you might as well get used to that format. You're going to be switching focus back it's and forth. Wimbledon. It's Wimbledon. I can do that. Yeah, just, uh, just, try, done it. just try to avoid whiplash. The cops okay. a bit of a long haul. Um, Anyways, I was just wondering if uh, you could yeah. speak a little bit to what it was like being asked to uh, to join the show and to go into that universe in such a uh, highly visible role. Uh, I don't know if anybody knows the story of how I arrived in Doctor Who. Well, I don't. That's why I'm asking. Ah. Um, well, basically, I was offered another part, and I couldn't do it because I was working on something else, and I don't have a TARDIS, so I couldn't be there. Um, love that joke, never get sick of it. Um, and um, so I, I had to say no, and I was completely torn up about this because I'm first and foremost a, a huge Doctor Who fan. I couldn't believe I'd even been offered a part. And so I wrote off to Stephen Moffat, who I have known in the past and uh, have access to his private email. <laughs> and, um, and I was just saying, I'm, I'm devastated that I can't actually be there, but if there's ever, you know, a need for a high cheekboned, blue-eyed villainess in the future, I'm your man. <laughs> and, uh, thank you. And uh, uh, a couple of, nothing, heard nothing, right, for a couple of months, and I was like, I've blown it, I've blown it, oh my God. Uh, and then I, my, my agent phoned and said, you might want to sit down for this one, because they're offering you uh, the role of the master. And I was like, what? I kept saying, really? 
Really? I said really about 20 times in quick succession. And I'm still saying that. <laughs> still like, really? Okay. Uh, so it didn't, take, uh, it didn't take long for me to grab that with both hands. And um, um, so that's why I'm here. Luck very gratefully, luckily. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, now we're going to swivel back over here. Hello. Hello. I'm just wondering, because you have kind of a unique situation on the show where everybody has a history of cat playing characters that have been played by somebody else. Yeah. Does that affect the dynamics on the set at all? What are the dynamics like on the set? Uh, they're amazing, actually. When I first arrived, I was nervous, you know, and, and I did, you know, th there, was, there was a little pressure that I was trying to ignore, you know, of what had gone before, and so that first day on set, First of all, I couldn't believe that I was on a Doctor Who set and there was like a TARDIS there and there was a Dalek over there and I was just going, oh my God. Um, and, um, but that first scene that I had to do was the one where it said on the script that Missy kisses the Doctor. So I thought, <laughs> I'll do that. <laughs> and a bit more. <laughs> and as I was doing that, I had my hand was behind me as I was trying to balance myself as I was sucking Peter's nose at this point. <laughs> and um, Jenna Coleman just grabbed my hand whilst I was kissing the doctor. So it was all kind of weird, um, <laughs> slightly inappropriate and um, very welcoming. So I was, it, was, it was quite good from the off. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Oh, hello. Hello. My question is, who do you like the best, Doctor or Car Clara? Um, I dislike both of them intensely. <laughs> uh, but um, but Michelle, the person, which is me, um, not that far from Missy. Um, uh, I have to admit, I like both of them very much. Uh, they're both really incredible human beings um, and they were very generous with me. A, a lot of people probably wouldn't put up with Missy's antics, but both of them really supported it. So I'm, I'm very fond of both of them very much. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> How do you pick your favorite between the Doctor and Clara? They just work so well together. I think they're one and the same. <laughs> yeah. Actually, weird links. Yes, sir, over here. Uh, Ma'am. I'm sorry, I, I, got <laughs> nine, I have 98 spotlights on my face, I can barely see. And it's the hair. <laughs> um, Tardis, Fezzes, they abound in this room, and, uh, but I am going to divest a little bit, and I apologize. I was introduced to you on a lovely television series called Psycho. <clears throat> We can't really say the other word because no. there's children in the And it begins with B and it ends with itches. <laughs> <laughs> um, my question was, how does playing known figures, uh, either historically known or literally known figures, affect or effect your approach to the character and to your um, performance? Well, thankfully, I am... Um, severely delusional um, and, um, and also quite lazy and never know who anybody is. Uh, so all those, that trifecta means that I go at my work with a huge degree of ignorance um, that seems to work for me. If, if I started to kind of really scratch the surface and do any kind of research, I probably wouldn't be able to turn up on set. Um, I really do try to stay quite blinkered <laughs> that seems to work. Beautifully. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Thank you for all of your, your work. And Thank for you. coming to Ottawa. Thank you. I'm delighted to be here. Thank you for having me. Yes. I was hoping you were going to call me ma'am and I was going to say no, I'm a woman. I'm a man. I was going to say sir just to everybody. And from I see there's a huge like, transgender thing already just with the master being a mistress. The big reveal is that um, I've got a vagina. <laughs> there are children in here, aren't there? I like how that was a question. <laughs> um, welcome to uh, Canada. Thank you. Uh, just wondering if there's any chance of you coming back to do any more episodes on Gotham. 
Oh, actually, I've just been asked to comment on the lady, and I was like, I found it really hard to comment on the lady because she doesn't have a name either, and I was like, wasn't really in it very much. So there's a, they were on the script I initially got, the lady, the master. When am I ever going to get like a character's name, <laughs> the woman? Um, she was killed in the script, and then she wasn't. So I, we may see more of her, um, I'm hoping, because the studio is just five minutes from my house. Good luck, I hope to see Thank you. you. I hope so too. Thank you. Yes. Hi. Hi. I have a question. Well, that's pretty obvious. But um, <laughs> if you could play any character in any play or television show, what would it be? Messy. <laughs> um, and the reason, and uh, that sounds like a joke, but as Missy, I get to be anything. Like, there doesn't seem to be any boundaries for me, which is kind of amazing. She's just, I get to, I mean, I think there was one episode where I decided to be a bit Welsh, and nobody questions my choices. They just go, okay, all right. Uh, so I, I feel like I've got, like, the the best part of the world, really, the best part available, especially for a late bloomer like myself. Very lucky. Well, I think that's working, so. Aw, <laughs> thank you. Amazing. Gorgeous. Yes, sir. How do you like playing a villain? Quite well. <laughs> uh, somebody asked me, there was a, I was doing a play, and uh, there's somebody in the stage door came up to me at the end of the play, and she said, why do you always play villains? And I'm like, this, this face is difficult to cast as anything other than a villain. So I'm just uh, taking advantage of what God gave me, which is coat hangers for cheap bones. Uh, and no lips. Well, I want you to say you're very pretty. Oh, well, thank you. Well, thank you. I mean, seriously, I won't. Thanks for that. Yes, young Peter. Hi. Um, I just wanted to ask, uh, which master is your favorite other than yourself? Oh, it's the narcissist just wants to say this, it's me. Um, Delgado, for sure, um, was like, that's kind of, I was hoping that there, I might get a little bit of Delgado in what I'm doing, but I wasn't being too conscious about it, but now I sort of, look back, I can see there's, there's a little nod to him because of the moustache that I have myself. <laughs> I have a little depilatory problem there I should really deal with. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I would say Delgado. Thanks. Oh, thanks. That's for you. Uh, hi, um, with the, uh, with Misty, with Master Being a Woman and some of the time modes are generally into women, is, do you think these are all nods to the next doctor being a woman? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Let's make it happen, people. Yes, sir, over here. Yeah, so, what is it with uh, the master being played by uh, uh, people from the Isles uh, um. with Spanish names? Oh, what, you, you, the fact that I'm a Scottish Mexican is confusing me. <laughs> it's confusing me. And, and Delgado as well as a Spanish name. It's just, we're going for the diversity vote. And um, as far as being a Scottish Mexican, it doesn't get more diverse than that. I am a minority of one. <laughs> and did they tell you when you got the role just to play it as Mary Poppins from Hell? <laughs> um, yeah, well, I mean, they, put, they stuck that caution on me, and I was like, okay, well, that's a clue. Um, and I just sort of took it from there. But yes, I, I love the joke that Mary Poppins is the most evil woman in the universe. <laughs> yes, go ahead. Hi, welcome to Canada from a fellow Scot. Oh, hello. Hi. <laughs> Can you tell me what Capaldi is like to work with? Is he as dark as the character? He is gorgeous. <laughs> uh, I actually had a crush on Pizza when I was in, because uh, we were sort of, he's a little bit older than me, um, and we were at, he was at Glasgow School of Art, and I was at the Royal Scottish Academy of Music and Drama. 
<laughs> and um, I used to see him cutting about town all the time. I thought he was like the coolest. He was kind of like our David Bowie, really, for us. He was just like the coolest guy ever. And so I now I'm working with him. And it's still another pinch me moment. Um, he's a god. He's a generous, amazing human being, and I like him very much. Thank you. Plus, he was in a band. He's in a band. Daddy's got an Oscar. He's just too fucking. He's a band. He's got a band. Yeah, he just looks good and lots of stuff. <laughs> He's very talented. That's good. Now, I, sorry. Now, after showing all the love for Peter Capaldi, if you had to pick another doctor to do the Missy story arc with, who would it be? Oh, maybe Pert Wee. Just because, like, I was my generation. And then, then, well, I mean, I was like Pert Wee Baker sort of transition and um, so yeah for me it would probably be those guys because it would just be like some weird time travel thing which meant I would become eight years old again <laughs> which I don't wish on anybody <laughs> thank you thank you hello hello as you're an amazing actress I was wondering if you had any advice for a young actress like me um yes don't give up ever Okay. And, and there's been times when, you know, it's, a lot of this business is about rejection and it's about how you handle that. And, um, you know, when you're getting on in years and you just keep getting the door slammed firmly in your face, it's like easy just to kind of give up. But if you do that, somebody else is going to take your space. So, you know, just believe in yourself and trust that this is an abundant world and everybody has their time. So just keep going. Thank you. Thank you. So we have about five minutes left, so I'm hoping we'll be able to get through the three people that are up here for that. So go ahead, Nadir. I was just wondering what your village was like, where you grew up, and how you like the kids. Mm. Um, both excellent questions. Uh, I grew up in a small village which is actually quite an industrial town called Glasgow. <laughs> I think quite a lot of Glaswegians are now living in Canada. Um, uh, so, yeah, it felt... I mean, Glasgow's really changed since I was a girl. It's a, it's a really cool city now. Um, I'm still very fond of Glasgow. But uh, it was, yeah, it was quite... It, it was quite a hard city when I was young. And now it's just a very lovely place to go shopping. Because um, that's what they do. That's the national... Um, uh, thing. We just do lots of shopping. Um, what else? And how do I like my chips? Oh, just bags and bags of them. <laughs> <laughs> just keep bringing them on. <coughs> Quite partial to sour, sweet, and um, what's that one? Oh. Ch chives. Sorry, That's the one. Yeah. yeah, anything that kind of makes your eyes water slightly and you can just about taste the chemicals, the, I like that. <laughs> Okay, so I have your least favorite question of the day. Oh, really? Don't ask it then. <laughs> <laughs> if you're able to, what happened with the cancellation of season two of The Brink? Oh, I don't know. Um, yeah, um, it's just, you know, HBO is HBO because they are really very picky and, you know, something has to be a massive hit for them to, like, take it on. And I think maybe it was just a little too niche and it just didn't have the audience. And, um, yeah, so it just, it just didn't happen. But thank you for reminding me of the break <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you. Perfect. Was there one more over here? Yes. I'll try to keep it, I have a kind of louder question, but I'll try to keep it to a short answer for you if you can. Um, with Stephen Moffat leaving next year, have you had a chance to speak with the new showrunner as to the direction you're going to be taking? I wouldn't speak to him. Uh, I wouldn't give him the time of day. Um, <laughs> Stephen Moffat is, is um, I don't know, I can't see past. I can't see Doctor Who past Stephen Moffat. There will be a world past Stephen Moffat, obviously. but. Um, like, I'm Peter Capaldi's master, and I'm Stephen Moffat's master, and I don't know, like, what will happen after that. Thanks. Thank you. All right, so we might have time for one more quick one, we've only got two minutes. So if there's one more, there was one person that stood up over here, that wanted to go quick. There we go, that was it. 
If you were not acting, what would you do? I'd crawl under a stone. <laughs> I don't know, like, I've asked myself that many times. There's like, occasionally through my career, there's been like the odd drought, a little dry spell, and I try and do something else, and I went to Home Depot once, and um, I asked them if I could apply, and they, they asked me, was I there to apply as a supervisor? And I said, well, do I get to drive the Fort Lift trucks at the back? And they said, the supervisors don't do that. I said, I'm not interested. <laughs> so, and then I got a job, so here I am. <laughs> Perfect. Well, guys, one more hand for Michelle Gomez.